This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. Envato provides a huge library of creative assets such as graphic elements and templates, stock footage, music, sound effects, fonts, and much more. On top of that, it offers unlimited downloads with an affordable subscription. So if you're interested, I have provided a link down below in the description, which will take you to their website. And of course, if you do decide to register, I get to earn a commission. Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. Today I'll be breaking down a 3D animation intro I recently did for a documentary series. Take a look. As I said, I was asked to create an intro or ident as they are called for a documentary series called Drita, which translates to light. It covers topics revolving around Albanians in the valley of Preševo, which is located in Serbia, but is mostly populated by Albanians. So we had to implement some sort of element that represents the Albanian culture. Before I started executing it technically, it was important that I knew what the core concept of these documentaries was, what they are trying to convey and so on and so forth. That way it won't be just some random animation, but it'll actually have some meaning behind it. So the main premise of this documentary series is to bring forth ideas that contribute to a brighter future. Now you've probably seen this concept a lot when it comes to light bulbs being used as ideas, but it did fit pretty well in this case because the light bulb would act as this bright idea that illuminates the future. As for the cultural element, first of all there is the flag, right? But it was a bit too obvious so we decided to go with something different and we landed on this traditional Albanian hat, which is called, and I have it right here, a plis. It has a bunch of other names, but it's basically a handmade skull cap that is part of the traditional costume of Albanians. I then had to somehow implement the hat into the light bulb idea. So I figured the light bulb has this sort of head shape. So we could do something like have the hat fall on the light bulb. So it looks as if the light bulb is actually wearing the hat. Once we had the concept for the animation ready, it was time to execute it. First of all, I knew this was going to be in 3D and usually I do all my 3D work in Element, which is an After Effects plugin from Video Copilot. It has some big advantages like being a real-time engine, but I wanted to utilize the ray tracing capabilities of a dedicated 3D program. Element doesn't do ray traced reflections, for example, and for this animation, reflections are a huge part of it, so it made sense to go with a 3D program. I had been using 3ds Max as my main 3D program ever since 2015, I believe, maybe earlier than that, but about a month ago, I decided to switch over to Blender, which I had been putting off for so long, and when I finally got into it, I was like, this is free and it's totally amazing. This project was also a good opportunity to get comfortable with the software because I found that there's no better way to learn something new than by putting it to practical use. The intro length was supposed to be anywhere between 10 to 20 seconds long, so I came up with two shots. The first one would be of many light bulbs laying on the ground, and then one of those light bulbs would turn on, so an idea is born. Then it would rise up and come between a few letters, and together they would make up the word Drita, which again is the name of the documentary series. I first modeled the light bulb and made sure to use a reference image for the best results. As for the materials, I added a glass shader to the glass part of the light bulb, a metallic shader to the metallic parts, and an emissive shader to the inner part so it would cast light. These were very easy to set up in Blender by using the principled shader. The outer parts ended up being a bit more realistic. As for the inner parts, they're not realistic at all as they lack detail and make no sense, but in the context of this intro, if you look at it from the front side, together with the letters, it's the word Drita. The light bulb is the eye letter. By the way, I will provide all the 3D models used in this project on my Gunroad page, which I've been using recently to share all my project files. They're all using the pay what you want system, so you can grab anything you want for free while still having the option to support the channel if you'd like to. Modeling the hat, or the plis, was pretty easy because if you look at it, 
it's basically a hemisphere shell with a hole at the bottom. So I created a sphere object, cut it in half, modified the shape a bit by using the proportional editing tools, gave it some thickness with a solidify modifier, and then beveled the bottom edges a bit so it wouldn't cut people's heads off. The texture was also pretty straightforward as I used a procedural noise texture and plugged that into the diffuse and normal for some bump which creates fake detail. Once I had the models ready, I then figured out the composition of the shots. For the first shot, I needed to have a ground element for the light bulbs to lay on, so I created a simple white plane and extruded it at the back with a smooth bevel to get this infinite background. I then placed the light bulb to lay flat on the ground, then duplicated both the light bulb and the emission material. For this duplicated copy, I set the emission to zero so it wouldn't cast any light and then used the Alt plus D shortcut which duplicates objects with property links. Kind of like you would do with effects in After Effects, so whatever adjustments you make to one of those objects, that reflects across all the other instances. And I did this until I filled the entire scene keeping in mind the golden rule of 3D, which is, if you don't see it, then it isn't there. So for the parts that are not visible to the camera, I just didn't bother filling those areas in. Plus, it helps with lowering render times. The animation was very simple. I had the camera dolly in slowly while shifting its focus from the foreground to the protagonist's light bulb. I animated a few values of the position and rotation with some easing, and the light emission amount to have the light bulb turn on and rise up as the camera follows it with an upward tilt. In the second shot, what you see is a different copy of the light bulb, so I can animate it independently without having to worry about transitioning the same object between two camera angles and positions. You can actually see the first copy of the light bulb going up in the background. Whee! The light bulb then settles in at the second shot with a bit of overshooting bounce. As for the title, I first created a text object and typed in the letters that I needed, then separated them all into individual objects by using the separate by loose parts option. I knew I wanted the light bulb to be the only source of light and reveal the shape of the letters by backlighting them, so I gave the letters a minor bevel to catch the light and a glossy material to reflect that light. I did however cheat a little bit and added another point light a bit further in the background which is parented to the light bulb just to help accent the shape of the letters a bit more. It's all about cheat codes in this business. I wanted the letters to be off screen at first and then come in from the side while the spacing between the individual letters shrunk down. This helps with the surprise factor so the viewer slowly makes out the word. Keep in mind, the same animation principles apply across all programs, so if you're familiar with them, then it should be very easy to animate in pretty much any program. It's just that the UI is different, but even then, if you've used the graph editor in After Effects, for example, then you'll find it's pretty similar in Blender as well. For the hat simulation, I use the soft body physics, and as with all simulated physics in 3D, it took a bit of trial and error to have it land properly on the light bulb, which was set as a collision object, but I finally got it to land with a bit of bounce and made sure it would also slide along up until the end of the shot so there was some constant movement and that gave a bit more interest to the shot. One of the things that logically didn't make sense was to use an environment map or an HDRI because we're in a dark room and the only light source should be the light bulb, right? <laughs> So, to give the elements some more reflections and to boost the exposure, I use this minimalistic HDRI. Now, on to rendering. Ah, rendering. So much time wasted. Blender has two render engines. The first one is Eevee, which is like a game engine. It's real time and renders very fast, but it's a bit harder to make it look realistic because it's not exact in its calculations. The other one is Cycles, which is what I used, which is a ray tracing engine and is realistic straight out of the box, but it takes a lot longer to render. In fact, the first shot took about 15 hours to render, and the second shot took about 5 hours to render, so in total around 20 hours of render time for about 15 seconds of footage, which is understandable considering the amount of reflective objects and the settings I used. I was using a high sample count, which was taking a lot of time to render, and even then it still looked very noisy, so I opted to use the denoiser with a low sample amount, which I was really skeptical of because the Blender denoiser does not take into account outgoing and incoming frames, as it is done on a frame-by-frame -frame basis, so sometimes you get these weird splotchy results and flickering, 
but it turned out surprisingly well. I could have actually rendered without using the denoiser. Instead, apply denoising in the compositing stage by using something like Neat Video or Red Giant Denoiser. Theoretically, that should help you with reducing splotches and flickering because those plugins do interpolate between frames when denoising. Originally, I had rendered out the two shots from the two cameras and made sure to have some extra frames at each end, so I had some room when editing in Premiere Pro. It did take a bit more time to render those extra frames, but it is worth it because you then have the luxury of playing around with the timing. I should also mention that Blender even has an editor, which doesn't seem to be as developed, but it is there. The raw renders looked terrible, but with the power of compositing, I managed to make it look a little less terrible. Blender does also have very powerful compositing tools, but seeing as I am already familiar with After Effects, then I decided to go with that. I started off by adding a Luma Fade at the beginning. I then used optical flares from Video Copilot to add a lens flare, which I tracked to the light bulb by using the point tracker. I added some exposure flicker to the whole shot by using an adjustment layer and even added a bit of flicker to the lens flare by using the flicker feature. A bit of color correction, some glow, and the first shot was done. The second shot though ended up being a bit more complex. Seeing as I had rendered it with transparency so there was no background, I could then easily add an outline glow by using alpha mats together with a simple choker effect and some blur to determine the outline thickness and softness. I also used the luma key effect to extract the bright parts of the image and then create light rays with a CC radial fast blur effect which really helped bring out the shape of the dark letters and the hat. I also added some lens flares, flickering, glow, a bit of vignette, and some blur around the edges by using the camera lens blur effect, together with a blur map which I created by using the gradient ramp effect, and finally did some color correction. You can also notice right at the last few frames, the shot gets very blurry as the light shuts off, which I thought looked very cool. Once the shots were complete, I then used Premiere to really dial in the timing, and even added some film grain with the film convert plugin, which helped take off the digital edge a bit. For the music, I used Envato Elements and let me tell you, when I found this piece, I just thought someone had created it specifically for this intro. It gave off this hopeful feeling, you know, the, the dingling sound at the beginning matched perfectly with the light turning on and the length was almost perfect but I did have to cut off a certain portion just to make it match better. Additionally, I did add a secondary sound right at the end as the light shuts off, which was the cherry on top. Alright, so that does it for this intro animation breakdown, so thanks for watching and being patient all the way through. Hopefully this was useful and entertaining in some way. If you have any questions, then feel free to leave a comment down below. Also, remember to download the 3D models or any other project files available on my Gumroad page, which again are using the pay what you want system so you can grab them for free, while still having the option to support the channel if you'd like to. If you don't want to miss out on upcoming videos, then make sure to hit subscribe and turn on the bell to be notified. Thank you once again for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace out.